The Nikki Glazer Podcast. Here's Hello. Nikki. Oh, sorry. Hello. I don't know why I what did that. Happened? I was like expecting you to do it. And then I was like, wait, you should be talking. <laughs> it's like my brain just didn't. It's it's Labor Day still. It's fine. Can it still be Labor Day? It's Does anyone show. else feel like it wasn't long enough? Yes. It was so just nice. One more day. It was so nice. I slept in from set. I got back from a gig on Sunday. Went to bed at 11, woke up yesterday, 12.35. Wow. It was awesome. I woke up around 9, you know, and just was like, no, not doing it. Chris was taking care of the dog. He was already up. I knew that was happening. Oh. And um, yeah, it was just, it was delightful. Did I feel guilty and feel like shit the rest of the day? You know it. You know it. But I still loved it so much. I've just, I'm, I'm like in my sleep era right now. I feel like there's a lot of work coming up. And I'm just tr- hibernating, trying to like reserve, mm. get all that. Even though that's not how sleep works. And we all know that. Um, just trying to rest anytime I can. Saying no to literally everything. Yeah. Everything that's coming in. Besides things that, you know, I have to do. And have committed to. That's a new thing. Uh-oh. I'm loving that. Uh-uh. Just knocked a post thing off the wall. <laughs> Saying no to that. It says, put yeah. me back up. Not Who gonna. Actually, shit. I want Too to because work. it's like my OCD. Like, and it's Velcro. It should go back mm. up. Sorry, you guys. For not, if you're not watching the um, YouTube version, I just knocked a llama Nikki's off the wall. gone off the chain now. She's off the rails. I mean, she's I'm uh, so off the rails. knocking How did over you things. Guys, enjoy your weekend. I waver between enjoying uh, holidays and despising holidays, depending on whether I'm trying to be productive or not. I remember like, oh, yeah. if I'm trying to be productive and it's like, I need to go to the post office or I need to go to the bank or I need people to like respond to an email. And then I look and it's like Memorial Day. Yeah. I'm like, why the fuck do we have this day off? Even though obviously there's good reasons for it to be Because you want to get shit done. Yeah. But then there are times when it's like, I just want to relax. I just need a break. And then I look at it and just like a random Wednesday. And I'm like, why do we have this to work today? So it yes. really is. They should arrange the holidays around when I'm trying to be productive is my point. Yeah. I, I forget that things are closed and people, but things aren't closed is the thing. Everyone's anymore. working. Everything's Nobody open. Everything's anything disgruntled anymore. about working on Labor Day. As Our they capitalist should be. society has gone out of control. It's, it's out of control. Working from home, we thought that because we're working from home, we're going to have to work less. No, that just means you're working 24-7. We all know that this is killing us and like the yeah. um, greed and the overachieving and trying to in the hustle culture and yeah. proving grind everyone set. that we're doing things, the grind set, just proving that just proving to everyone that we're working so hard. Yeah, we all know that it's like not good Nikki, for did you. Did you do your that, ice bath today? Exactly. You got your like, ice bath, it, 5 a.m. Even Earth. relaxing. That, that's something self-care, and that is hard. Like, an ice yeah. bath is hell. Like, yeah. self-care is now turning into work, too, now. Yeah. And you like, have to suffer and shock shiver D-Mat. in a shower. <laughs> my shock mat. Yeah, you are un- <laughs> You are trying to lay, to, for your overall health spikes. and well-being, you lay on spikes. Yes, I lay on spikes for 30 minutes before bed each day, each night. What happened to just sleeping until 1235 on a Sunday? Even this isn't the you... 90s anymore, Nikki. This isn't the stoner era. Yeah. Remember when it was rule. cool to be a slacker? Yeah. Man. It, it used to be cool. Yeah, Noah? I have a new rule. I think it's like it Ooh, came with Bill age. Mar. Okay. Okay. New rule new is... Rule. I don't like doing anything strenuous a day before work starts. So like Sundays for me, I will not travel. I will not do anything ambitious like a big hike Mm. or sightseeing or anything crazy like that, like dinner party or anything like that. Sundays are just for doing nothing, literal nothing, getting ready for my work On the girls chat, I even went to the park to, I always go to the park with my dog. It's very easy. It makes me feel like I've done something. I throw the ball three times. She's worn out and then we leave. And it's near my house. It's yes. so easy. 
park. But it makes you feel so much like I've done something. Yes. It literally takes 15 minutes between when I leave the door and I enter back into my apartment. It's so easy. But I was at the park and I saw a guy like flying a kite with his son and I, it infuriated me because I was like, <laughs> What's I can't his problem? Be- why does anyone want to do that? Even though I loved <laughs> flying kites as a kid and we would go up to DePere Park all the time with my dad and fly kites and I was so grateful that mm. he wanted to do that and was like so game for it and um, but I was just like, I would never want to do that now. And then it made me mad at myself. Like, why can't I be mm. someone who like wants to show a child the world? <laughs> and I had a dream. I was pregnant this weekend and I kind of like liked being pregnant because I just was like, haha, everyone that thought I couldn't do it. Like I, it was just mm. a me showing off that I could do. I honestly. Number three, three type. What do you mean? You oh, want to be type pregnant three. just to be, just to get the applause. Just to be like, yeah, I can do it too. <laughs> or just like, you know, like, and because I know it is such a, a physically exhausting and um, difficult thing to even achieve, first of all. Mm-hmm. And there's like some kind of like superiority that women who can conceive naturally feel um, that is not, is wrong. And I'm not perpetuating that, but it's in our culture to feel like shame if you can't conceive. And so there was part Mm -hmm. of that of like, I probably could conceive at 40 and a half years old. And like, so I think in my brain, but then I don't, I didn't want to do anything. I just wanted to be pregnant and like show everyone. But that was, that was it. And I got to do it in my dream and that was enough for me. And I don't think it's some dying, uh, like this like secret wish of mine to be a mother. I don't think that was what was going on. It was just like, who no. knows what it's about dreams who gives a shit i'm so sorry else. i told you about a dream i'm so so oh sorry i am just so i like broke my own rule it was supposed <laughs> to be just an aside i had a there... dream last night that i was pregnant and john stamos was there and there was an alien telling okay, me now about I'm time travel yeah <laughs> well that no that would never be one of my dreams because they don't look like cohesive things that are happening it's just glimmers of something they would never yeah. whenever people recount their dreams to me i go that sounds too narrative to me Mm-hmm. to be a dream but um yeah I, I mean this weekend was i flew to north dakota on there you go saturday which is so great because i had friday to Land be at home dreams. in st louis and i never am nice. home in st louis on friday did nothing on friday night under the guise of like i have to travel tomorrow early even though i could have done something but i didn't felt guilty about that because my family was like hanging out at my parents cabin and i could have driven down but oh, i was like i don't want it in much. eureka missouri it's wow. like uh, probably 45, 40 minute drive out. But it's Your like. Your parents have a cabin? Yeah. Wow. And how many I times have I that. been there in 15 years? Twice. Oh. I mean, it was I, featured I bl- on Welcome how? Home Nikki Glazer. Oh, yeah. So three oh. times, I guess, I filmed an episode there, too. <laughs> They've had a cabin for 15 years? Yeah, probably oh longer. Oh, my God. That's it's my been dream. flooded. They've rebuilt it. No, yeah. it's, it is really nice, but I. I have like an aversion to it because I just feel like I'm going to be trapped down there. Yeah, well, that's the problem. Yeah. have to like cook things. Even though I've never been forced to cook, I've never been forced to sit around to fight. I don't know what my aversion is to it. I just mm. need, I don't know. I got to really explore that. And I'm not going to, I've been thinking about it for years. I'm not, I, I, I do want to get a, a, a house on a lake. I do want to do that. Mm. Um, but this is on a river and you have to walk down the steep thing. And then my dad's going to be like, uh. get that, get that rope. And then, I just don't want to get that rope and I just don't want to like worry about the dogs falling in. And then we just like, we just cruise on the river and then my dad points out like rookeries and different eagles and hawks. Like if you've seen one hawk, you've seen them all, even though I do get excited when I see hawks because they're beautiful birds. But I just, I don't know what stresses me out about Mm, it. I haven't been down there. Yeah. I mean, my aversion to nature and kites and doing things that are like just sitting and breathing and like listening to the to nature is hard that's why i started running again type seven i'm starting to run again because it's the only time that i can do an activity it's running and my pilates class are the only times and this but not this because i'm talking that i am quiet Mm. and with my thoughts and yes i'm listening to music on a run but i don't really like think about the music so i'm alone with my thoughts during pilates and during and running and those are the only times, but Pilates wasn't giving it to me enough because I'm too focused on how hard it is. It has to be so, like a medium level of hard, and then your mind can wander. And I really got some things figured out running this weekend. Oh, I really like. I was I had to stop and jot notes down. I like, just like uh, like what did what did you come just up ideas, with? Ideas, big ideas for stuff. Like I have a this interview coming up where I'm interviewing a celebrity who's oh. very um very 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 famous oh one god of the most famous let me guess people on the i'm gonna planet. guess right now is it well i uh, can't tell you i don't think <laughs> we're not playing that game is it uh 
uh well who's the most famous person is it barack obama it's i mean i would say this person's name is just as recognizable as barack obama's maybe oh even god is i know it, uh, no one knows right Noah, you know right yes okay. i just had to show no, that stop off. guessing <laughs> stop guessing uh but i'm doing an interview of a person um who requested me to interview them and so i've been studying this person requested um, you yeah Wow. So this famous person said, I want Nikki Glaser it's to interview me. one of the me. coolest things that's ever happened to me. That's amazing. No question. And no I'm doing oh a God. free God. interview with this person. Oh my God. I person. can't believe Leonardo DiCaprio asked you. <laughs> it's up there. It's there. <laughs> wow. I'm not joking you. He, w- uh, I have to lose, I think, um, 20 years to talk to him. Yeah. But yep. um, <laughs> yeah. I don't know how you do that, but somehow. Um, but anyway, this i i had some like i needed to think i've been like putting off do you ever have something that's so big and like you're nervous about that you just don't work on it oh god yes well that happens with trips for me (laughs) what do you mean like if i have a big trip coming up i and i'm like nervous about it because i don't want to go on it or whatever i just imagine it's not happening until the day i'm on the plane okay but how do you pack well, I guess the night before. All right, you yeah. got me, Nikki. The night before, I yeah. uh, I'll pack. You got it. That's what I do with trips too. I, people are always like, "Where are you going to be next weekend?" And I go, "I don't know. This yeah, weekend it, is what I'm thinking about. Tomorrow, right. I don't look Stay any. In the I don't want to look ahead. But this thing is something that I have to like prepare for. So I went on a run, not wanting to think about it. But then I started. I was listening to this person. Like I'm studying this person. So I was listening to something that they've made while uh-huh. I was running, and I got. I got was very inspired, yeah. and I was like, "Oh, I think you know." You always try to. I, I'm not a great interviewer. I've done it a ton, but it's not something that I've like. I really hone and work at, and that's not going to be expected of me for this because they're not picking me. This person didn't pick me because. Well, of they've seen all of my interviews or whatever and they're like they just pick me because i'm a person that they I, I don't know why they pick me but it's not i don't have to be a good interviewer but i do want to ask questions that are like interesting and mm-hmm. but it's like uh, why did you invade has been ukraine asked everything <laughs> this person's <laughs> been asked everything possible my friends are like you have to ask them about this and it's like some gossipy thing and i'm like Anya goes, you've got to ask about blah, blah, blah. And just imagine it's like, wait, let's say it's, 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 I was interviewing Taylor Swift, which is not Taylor Swift, but it would literally be Anya being like, well, you got to ask her what happened with Joe. And I go, mm-hmm. do you understand that I would never ask her what happened with Joe, even if we were best friends sitting around a fire late at night and we've had some cup glasses of wine, even though I don't drink, but she got me to because she's Taylor Swift and she gave me to, to do anything. I would never, no matter, no matter yeah. how close I got to this person, the question Anya was like, you got to, I was like, are you fucking <laughs> kidding me? Are we even having this conversation? There's no way I'm asking that question. Um, but it's, you're I, so I, good at interviews. I just want to let you know, that as a person who has listened to you interview many many people your best quality is that you don't you're not doing an interview you're just having a conversation with people and you are so good at disarming them and just kind of like getting the stuff that is very conversational which is what everybody wants to hear i feel very inspired by this person and that's a really good place to come from where you're like oh i'm this always happens to me when i prepare for something i become an intense fan Mm -hmm. um When I was maybe a casual fan before, because you just, you, I read this person's book this weekend. I just got done Mm. reading their Wikipedia, which is, uh, you, you might roll your eyes at that, but that, try to read some, a very famous person's entire Wikipedia. It's a hundred pages. (laughs) It's so long. And there's Mm -hmm. so many details and there's so many like dates and producers and things that you're just like, I don't need this. Producers. you know, well, yes, this person has worked with producers, but I'm just saying, like, heads. Wikipedia is dense with like information you don't need. <laughs> hmm. um, Denzel. But ex- <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> you think Denzel Washington <laughs> would pick Asked. me? Um, I mean, this person is, re- it's relevant that they picked me. Oh, I will say okay. that. Yeah. It has precedence, but Chris it's um, um, one of the most n- notable names on the planet is not Chris wow. but yeah so it's um it's very exciting but anyway i got some answers for that right. when i was running and i hate to be one of those people that's like i don't know running just like opens up my creativity and because running does suck but i'm yeah. starting to think that it doesn't and i actually need it and i want to start meditating again i think that's really what i'm in search for yes. because when i used to meditate i would get answers to things i would get ideas i would get mm. 
just b- just b- big ideas of like, I should do a reality show. And then all of a sudden I'm like, what would that look like? And then I just send off an email right in the middle of it. And I'm like, I want to do a reality show. And then it, suddenly it's like happening. Like you, yeah. you just like, get these big ideas that sometimes maybe you don't want to like sometimes you have a big idea and then you start it. Everyone can relate to starting a project and then being in the middle of it and being like, I don't want to really do my own backsplash. I should have hired someone for this. And like, you're in the middle of like gluing all these tiles together and you're like, what Mm -hmm. is this? And then you, but you still have to finish it because you can't just have no backsplash. I mean, can you, you can, it's not like there's nothing there. I think you could survive for a a normal lifespan without a light without a backsplash man when i learned the word backsplash i really (laughs) got liberal with it because it made me feel cool that i like knew something about home design sconce backsplash Mm -hmm. there you Um, go i asked chris what the um what the edge around doors are what's that called molding molding why why can't we call it the edging like why mm. why is it to be mo- why is a sconce why can't it be a light fixture that's on the wall like why does it have to have a name that's confusing and alienating oh yeah. can i ask a football question that of course. no one's been able to answer for me i'll answer it okay uh, so sorry if we talked about this on the podcast before please just interrupt me if we have in football to yes. get a first down mhm to get a down Okay. You get four chances. That's right. What are those chances called? Downs. Why is the goal <laughs> also the name of the steps it takes to get the goal? That doesn't make sense to me. So in any other in any other thing is the goal the name of the goal also the steps it like did I I don't even know how to do, the rungs of a ladder are not called ladders. Do you know what I mean? Mm. You want your goal is to get a first down. Right. So it's for okay, so your goal is to get a first down, but then people go, it's first down. So did they get it or is it the first chance to get a first down? Why are they both the same? I think you have to consider it like there's many first downs on a field. It's every 10 yards is a first down. Okay, okay, but uh, this isn't the issue. To get a first down, mm-hmm. you have four chances to do it and those are called downs. Why is the thing you're trying to get also called the st- the steps to get it is also the thing. No, what is this making any sense so, to you? What's what's clicking in my head while Brian thinks of the answer is that you are basically answering the question that you had before this, which is why do we call it a sconce? Because there are many light fixtures, but a sconce is very specific. So that's why we have sconce. Also, sconce okay. is fun to say. But why yeah. would they name the thing like <laughs> that? I don't goal know. Is to get a first down, and then okay, you, you an can analogy. even you can literally say it's first down, and we're trying to get to first down. Well, then didn't we get it? If it's because first there's down, a lot of like for someone damage. learning football, it's very confusing when you hear we're trying to get a first down, and it's first down to get that first down. That is what <laughs> I can see. Yeah, I can how see could that. that not be so confusing? Why is everyone maybe, not confused by this? I'm well, like, do you get I'm confused, really confused. Do you get confused by the concept of laps? Like you have to run laps. You have to, and every time you go around, it's another lap. So in, it, it's it's circular in a way. I know, every but time four laps to, equal a mile. It doesn't equal a lap. It's not first lap, second lap, third lap, fourth lap, and then you get first lap. It's a one mile after four laps. Do you know what I'm saying? Is this? I do. Because anytime I talk, I talked to Chris about this. I think I talked to Sean O'Connor about this. Okay, they point. don't even seem as frustrated as I am with this. This has never, this has never occurred to anyone. How has this not occurred to anyone well, else that the name of the steps to get the thing is the thing? The name of this. Yeah, it's difficult for me to get frustrated because it's hard to even understand what you're saying. But when you first, <laughs> how is it hard? Well, it, it's hard for me to understand uh, the frustration okay. behind it. So I, I need to come up with an analogy. That's my goal is to come up with an analogy outside of football where but the same thing meanings? happens that we've accepted. But OK, when I tell you, hey, so we're trying to get a first down here and it's first down. That makes sense to you, right? That's a, that is a sentence. I mean, no one would say that, but well, like, because everyone get, knows first down like, is like I'm trying to um, I'm trying to earn a thousand dollars, but I already have a thousand dollars. Yes. You can get another thousand dollars. You can get it. You can get many first downs. No, no, no. Downs. You're, you're mis- I understand you can get many first downs. I'm talking about the chances that you have to okay. get a first down are called downs. That's right. So it's second down to get a first down. It's third down to get a first down. It's so why are the chances to get it called the thing? 
I hope anyone listening mm. understands what the fuck I'm talking about because to someone who's learned, it's almost like when you learn a language late in life, there are things about the English language that are totally confusing. Yeah. Like though and rough being the same, like though O-G-U-O-U-G-H can be uh, uh, mm-hmm. or O. Oh. And it's like, why? And I think mm-hmm. that's kind of a similar thing I'm going by, which is like, I would never have noticed the though and rough being different unless I was learning the language and I'm learning right. the language of football and I'm confounded by it. Yeah, no, I can, I see your, what you're saying. And why is a safety a position, but it's also a call? <laughs> Please, wh- what's why do that? we park on a driveway and drive no, on a parkway? no. I really need an answer here. Is there is there <laughs> is there a um, correlation between a, the safety position and the safety play? Are those two related at all, or do they just happen to have the same name? They happen to have the same name. Why? I mean, what? Were I guess they you could. Running s- out of wor- they ran out. Of, well, this was. You have to remember, Nikki, that football was invented in the nineteen twenties or whenever. Yeah, where and we had back, less words. There were less words back then. And okay. you know what? The the dictionary was only three pages. And it, it didn't even go to Z. <laughs> but I, so. it's a confusing game already. Why <laughs> double up on words of meanings? No, I get it. Yeah, safety. Um, safety is a position uh, because they are the last person that can stop you from getting a touchdown. They're the last line of defense. And then getting a safety is... <laughs> The worst possible thing that could happen to the offense. Is it embarrassing? It's embarrassing. So it's like kind of, (laughs) and generally when a safety happens, it is embarrassing. Like, yeah, I get that vibe. Every time people talk about it. You're backed up against your own end zone. You know, they're going to try to sack you in your own end zone, which is already embarrassing. It's like you got attacked in your own home. Yeah, but usually, even when you're just watching it happen, what, what the quarterback does to avoid the safety is generally goofy and dumb looking. Like sometimes they'll go back and they'll step out of their own end zone backwards. Uh-huh. Sometimes they'll be like flailing around and stumble and they'll try to like throw the ball haplessly across the line of scrimmage, but it'll look stupid. And then they get you, they get a penalty and then it's a safety anyway. Or they'll just like try to run forward and get smashed and they're a quarterback and they're not a rushing quarterback. So they look like a, a doofus. It really oh is one God. of the too much most to embarrassing know. plays to fall victim to is a safety. Okay, um, I'm I'm slowly figuring it out, but um, I learned nothing from this conversation except I'm yes. a little bit more. Conf- I'm now I'm just getting frustrated that other people don't understand what I'm going through, and if yeah. you do, yeah. besties, someone write to me if you're confused by the down thing too, or if you have an answer for it. I'm sure there's some person that will be like, "Well, a down was named after something." Um, I just want to know why we have to use the same word for two different things within the same concept. Um, and then we're going to go to break. I'm going to tell you a new word I learned this weekend that I am proud I learned because I'm trying to learn new vocabulary. And I, I I got rid of that old app and I got a new app. I'll tell you about it. All right. All right, I'm back. Okay, so we talked about that app I downloaded last week, Elevate, mm-hmm. and it just wasn't doing it for me um, because it was repeating games. Yep. Mm-hmm. And... I learned a little bit, but not enough. And so I went on a quest to find like a really good new vocab app. And I recommend Atlas English. So okay. it'll it'll give you groups of five words. And I will say you probably know, it'll test your, your level of vocab at first. And you're going to be like, oh my God, this is so stupid. But then it gets hard and you're like, oh my God, wait, I'm so stupid. And then it places you <laughs> and then it gives you groups of words that you probably know probably three out of the five. And then you do all these games where you like fill in the blanks and you you like go over the definition in many different ways. And then you still might not remember the word because like for me, I'm just trying to memorize new words, work them into my vocabulary. And this one the other day I could not get, even though I played like six games with it where it was mixed in with other words and I was trying to fill in the blank. Inculpate. Did I get it right? Hold on. It sends me it every day. So yes. Inculpate. I N C U L P A T to accuse or blame. It was not landing. It is now. Oh, you know it something? It is now in my head. Sometimes what? in words you have other words and it's like culprit. Culprit. I just saw, yes. I just saw the word culprit in there. That's good. Inculpate to blame someone. But it was not sticking. And I was like, damn it. No matter how many games I play in this stupid app, it's not going to stick. And I kept trying to like remember it to Chris and I would just go get a drink of water and then I would return and be like, can I remember it? No, it's gone. So then I realized though, 
this is right after I downloaded the app and played the game. I was like, damn it, it's not working. But then I kind of bookmarked it in the app to be like, I need this. I don't know even how I did it. It just said like save words. And so now it just shows me throughout the day. It'll just pull up inculpate. It'll just send me a little like text like boop at the top of my thing. Inculpate to accuse or blame. And I swear it's incepted me now. And now I've learned that word. I also learned mendacious or mendacity, mm. which is a lot like to, to something that lies a lot. If they're mendacious. And then I also learned. Wow, I didn't know that. Um, mendacious is an SAT word. I thought I knew what it meant, and I guess I don't. Yeah, it's. I think it's uh, to someone who lie lies a lot. Yeah, if you're mendacious. And then I, the other word, oh my God, please let me. It's to castigate. Ha! Castigate is to <laughs> like, uh, not accuse or blame. Castigate is to like punish, I think. Man, mm. did I get it right? castigate someone look it up that's the other word i learned so i learned yeah to three, reprimand severely yeah i'm gonna castigate you so the, i'm gonna i learned three castigate. new words this weekend that are locked in like they're for okay. the rest of my life almost and you can do that too if that's of interest to anyone i don't know if anyone cares about the shit but stuff like that i love stuff matters like that. to me so um, wait all you did to get those locked in was focus like on just those three them. You yeah, I, well, them. I bookmarked them. I played all the games that they had. They're kind of boring games. So they're like, you know, you have to put them in, in a blank and like you get five words. And so those five words become game. You do gameplay with those five words. It gives you the definition. You re review them and then it gives you sentences and it is a blank. And then you have to put the five words and put them in. Then it's like it does. It does a bunch of different games and you hmm. and you think those games help. But this, sometimes you need extra. And then getting those alerts all day. I'm like, it has been my Goal. Inculpate, I don't like the word. It hurts no, it's my mouth to say. to say it. It doesn't yeah. sound good. It sounds hurts like I'm trying to, to sound it. too smart. Um, I don't know that I'll use it, but at least it's there for me if I want yeah. to inculpate someone. It sounds like a word that you would use in a writing. I'm not going to inculpate you for trying to use it. Thank you. Oh, oh does it God, sound right. like... A, no, it sounds like a word you could use like if you're ever doing some kind of written interview or just just kind of more for writing. Yeah, inculpate yes. doesn't sound like a word that you could slip into conversation no. and not be considered a People dweeb. are going to go, what? Yeah. Did you just say? <laughs> Excuse me? Oh, I guess you're Miss Smarty Pants. It's honestly, if I ever meet Sam Harris, I'll yeah, try to talk about something. <laughs> That's it's literally that. That's I don't mean to castigate to or castigate you, but I feel inculpated in this. Yeah. You know. I, these are words he would use for sure. Um, I have a word totally. that you can use in what? any situation huh. that makes you sound cool and smart. Yeah. It is mercurial. Dude, that is so weird you said it. <laughs> I read it in a book to like last week. I've read this book, The Color of Everything. He said it in that. I looked it up because I've heard it. I've used it twice in one week. Yeah. And not called it out and just slipped it in. And because it's, it's a great word. Great. It makes sense logically because it's, it's someone like whose based moody on... goes up and down, like you can't yeah. predict their mood. Yep. That's a word I that love it. It encapsulates a concept that people can easily understand that we don't have a word for. Yeah. Yeah. And also Shot it's like Freud. kind of cool because it's based on Mercury, the planet, and yeah. the god, which then people can like logically understand, even if they don't know the definition of the word, they can infer oh mercury that sounds like fire at least so i was thinking yeah. of a thermometer that's so crazy like yeah and that too oh, yeah, yeah that's a good way to remember oh, it too right, it could elements. be that as well we no um, coming in with the that's alternate that's crazy death. that you said that brian because i literally <laughs> used that word on girls chat no you could probably find the girl like i used it on girls chat and i felt like did i just use that correctly i think i did i can't believe i did it um it is very exciting Yes. To learn a new word. I will say that um, I was watching, I was binging Sarah Silverman when I was in North Dakota because I couldn't sleep and I just went down a, a, a wormhole on her and my God, is she so funny? And she's, I've like, you know, just haven't paid attention, I guess, in the past 10 years as much as I used to. Like I used to be Taylor Swift levels of obsessed with Sarah Silverman. Yeah. Like yeah. I had posters, I had, uh, you know, I would buy books that she said in interviews she liked. Like I was obsessed with her in college to a pretty um, insane degree and um, concerning degree. And then I kind of just like, like, I don't know, I stopped paying attention. Maybe I was just like, I don't want to be influenced anymore because I was sounding so much like her early on in my career, whatever it was. I But I went on YouTube wormhole the other day and I was up till like three in the morning just watching clips of hers. She is so fucking funny, dude. It, yeah. I was. Uh, she did this one joke where she was talking about um, her dog, like licking up, like 
uh, like licking her after her and her boyfriend had sex, like post coitus. And she said he was licking the deter deteri detch detch. Wow, what is it called? Mm. It's like detrius or something. It's a word for like the leftover gunk, like the. I forget the word for it, but she uses this crazy big word. And she was like, I use that because I'm talking about cum and I wanted to make it sound more palatable, like the detritus <laughs> or something. She was like, detritus. He was looking, detritus. detritus. She used that word. And detritus. I like that. She, yeah. So she used that to uplift the whole joke that was really just like her dog licking up cum. And then she had a point that I have also made before, which is like, the dog wants to have that. Like you would say that's animal abuse. Cause she stopped the dog. She's like, no, no, no. Mm -hmm. But she made the point of like, the dog actually does want that very badly and would not be disgusted by it. And it would yeah. be a treat for the dog, but you can't let the dog do that. But no. it does want it. My dog's been uh, licking up piss all over oh. town. And I have to keep stopping him from. Because is like human <laughs> piss. N yeah, human. No, it, uh, dog. <laughs> probably dog piss. I mean, I can't assume what kind. Is that of a piss new trait that they've picked up? Their dog has picked up. She's picked up. He, she, he, Jack. He, uh, yeah, Jack. It's looking up piss all the time. I don't know if it's new, but I'm kind of noticing it more. And over the last like year or so, I've been like trying to train him to not do it anymore. Right. Well, because that's then you you want him to lick your face too. We're not going to give that up. No, I mean I don't actually. I don't let him lick my face. But really, is that how really your skin is so good? He'll lick my hand. Uh, That's cute. Yeah, or, or something. But like, no, yeah, I think it's just more like I'm worried about like parasites. I'm just like I don't want him to get a disease from yeah, licking I, piss. I remember hearing if your dog sniffs poop that has worms in it, they can sniff up the worms in their nose. And so whenever my dog's sniffing poop, I'm like, get away! Like, yeah, way too. Because I just picture worms being like, like snorting oh, it's worms. It's so horrible. Mm -hmm. the and worms. I can't handle it. Oh, no, I God. can't handle it oh, either. God. No. Okay, moving no, no, on. No, no, no. I do um, have something. Speaking yeah. of Sarah Silverman, um, did you see Adam Sandler's Netflix special that came out? I saw the first 35 minutes of it because we got tired. Um, it was way too late at night for us to start it. But um, yeah. I was enjoying myself. It's a wild ride. I like yeah. don't understand even what I'm watching sometimes, <laughs> even though I will say all the songs and all the jokes are so fucking funny. And like, it was almost getting frustrating because I, I'm so jealous of how his mind works in terms of like creativity. Like it's just a different mind than mine comedically. And just I really like wish I was a little bit more the free. shackles of structure free of any like logic yeah. or reason and then the voices are so funny and you just get lost in the, the storytelling is crazy and 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 uh, you don't know whether he's telling the truth sometimes and then the story will take a turn that is just so insane but it still works and it's like such a risk to take that and then it pays off it's just it really is incredible i can't wait to finish it uh, tell yeah. me your thoughts and well and it works because it also works because it's adam sandler and he when he starts a story you have this you know who he is you already like him you have his whole backstory you imagine he's telling the truth and then he can undercut you whereas i think if a new comedian came out and started telling like fantastical stories of a similar manner it probably hmm. wouldn't work as well i don't know i disagree i think this is well this actually, is why has adam sandler ever worked mm, this I actually is... now that you say that i have an example already that popped in my head that it did work <laughs> who, who this comedian from boston named brian higginbottom who um sadly tragically died but Oh, he had no. this. Uh, he had. He was blowing up on TikTok. He's this comedian from Boston who everyone liked, and around twenty twenty two or three or something, he just started blowing up on TikTok purely by posting clips from the one ten minute set that he had recorded. Mm -hmm. It was like the only material he had recorded that he like put on the internet, and just those ten clips like started. He started blowing up. He started getting hundreds of thousands of followers okay and um and like i felt like you know wow this guy's i was very focused on it because it's like it's another brian and this is my he's like funnier than me <laughs> and um, <laughs> was that part of it i, I can see myself <laughs> being like there's another nikki and being like what's going on here there's only room for one of us in this town yeah well there's already brian regan so i'm fucked oh, but yeah. uh Fuck, yeah dude. this guy was is was funnier <laughs> than me and he was blowing up on tiktok and i was like this guy's gonna Ascend in a similar way to let that like Scott Sice ascended after he, his uh, Instagram videos. Is he the guy that goes the the he works in retail? Yeah, exactly. Um, I felt videos? like the same thing was going to happen to Brian Higginbottom, and um, unfortunately, I think he. You know, I I don't know how he died, but I think it was the, what you would imagine. Well, I but just he was think just that... about to blow up. 
but I'm sorry. He had yeah. a this part of his bit was talking about his son that he didn't have, and he kept just like exaggerating these aspects of of his son, saying like he's like ten foot tall, he's got one eye and one tooth, and he's teaching him how to shoot a bow and arrow, and he tries to um incite the audience to take this kid down because he's a menace to society and like that's the type of exaggeration that adam sandler might do and it yeah. worked for brian higginbottom an unknown comedian so i rescind my previous statement is the point okay i i, I do think that adam could get this is what built adam sandler is yeah. like the the voices and like the just silly the silliness yeah um and just uh, being free to be silly and just um, and seeming just like a good dude throughout it all, even though yeah. he has a joke where his dad's penis pokes him in the eye. <laughs> like it's, <laughs> it's there's some crazy stuff in this. He goes down on a balloon. It's just so yeah, it's so one. you guys. It's so weird. But what were you gonna say? Did you? Um, well, so what I, I, I can't wait. For, I heard the song is really good. Well, the song at the end, yeah, it's really mm-hmm. it's a heartfelt song at the end. Um, and, and as as a person of co- in comedy, it's doubly uh, sad and touching. But I, what stuck out to me for the special was the direction, the directing, and the oh yeah, the Safdie just, brothers. Yeah, and just the way that he approached the special to make it like you know he's an arena comedian, he's selling out arenas, and he chose to shoot like a a staged uh, special in a shithole where Do a bunch of things th- went wrong. A lot of things went wrong. Yeah. But don't you think that the went wrong on purpose? Yes, no, it was all staged. Okay, the, good. The I, anyone up. who's thinking that the screens like I read a review of it and they're like, we don't know if the screens really didn't work or no, if that no, was staged no. or if there really was a fight in the audience or if that was staged and it's like every single th- or if he didn't the dog. I I got confused. There was one part where um he has a coffee and he's like, is there is this stevia and they're like yeah, and, he, and he's like, yeah, and then he's like, no, that's Splenda, and he and I go, oh, that's real, and Chris is like, no, it's not. <laughs> None of it was None real. None of this. This is all set up, and it's the very fact that his windshield's broken at the beginning, and the guy but didn't fix it. Doesn't it. like pay, but there's. I'm waiting for any of this to pay off. Like the screen's not working, paying off. I'm thinking it's just like uh, it, it embedded in it to create. A, I don't. I don't know the purpose of it yet. I'm in. Well, it's, and I'm it's ironic it. because he's Adam Sandler. He's one of the biggest stars in the world, and he's okay, performing in a shithole where they can't get the screens to work. But then also, it's it's comedic trolling for anybody who thinks that it's real. And Got also, it. it's just it's just comedy in general. It's just that like, isn't it funny? The whole thing, also, just from the start to the finish, I appreciated because it felt like not a stand-up special. It felt like I was watching a movie of somebody uh, trying to film a stand-up. stand-up. Yeah. Yes, exactly, which yes, I really like. Totally. I thought yeah. that was good too. And I liked all the things like it just kind of showed uh what his life is like in terms of the demand of someone like being like, Can you FaceTime with my that was son? Amazing. He's he's been a scooter accident. Okay, can you sign all these jerseys? It's for a, an MS charity. Can you yep. do like all, all the asks he's getting before he goes on stage, which I'm guessing are, come from such a real place. But yes. um I just I I just love his songs and his his, his and the comedy is good too. On it's top of so all of good. that, all of it's so good. Yeah. He's so cute. He's so great. He's so likable. Um, Fun fact, and this yeah, this oh. is maybe a Nikki Glaser podcast exclusive fact. As Ooh. I drop the microphone, embarrassing. I was, I was basically just well, got a safety like a of pod. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just, there we go. <laughs> um, so Adam Sandler <laughs> filmed that special at the Nocturne Theater in Glendale. California. Okay. It's really close to LA. Yeah. And um there's only been one other comedy special filmed at the Nocturne Theater in Glendale at the time. There's been another one. There's a yeah, there's another one. And that was Adam Conover's stand up special. Which is coming out on Dropout TV this month. What is Dropout TV? Uh, Dropout TV is what college humor has become. It's a subscription service online that has bespoke content for pretty much nerds. Um, But it's extremely popular and successful and has found an incredible niche. It's really quite remarkable how the college humor guy, I forgot his name. uh, Ricky. Yeah, Ricky Velez. (laughs) He's a a comedian. Um, No, but he was Mayor Van Veen. Sam Reich. I don't know. Is that his name? Who cares? Yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, uh, it's amazing how after college humor ended, um, he still managed to create a brand new thing that is now almost just as successful as college humor and dropout TV. Okay. We'll but look the for point it. is, the point is, 
two specials filmed at the Nocturne Theater, both by comedians named Adam. Oh, wow. We're on this first name thing again. Yeah. Are there any other Nikki comedians? Well, your biggest competition in my Nicole mind is... Your Fire. biggest competition in my mind is Nikki Haley. Yeah. Who spells her name That's the right. same way and is she going does. in a totally different direction. It's so interesting <laughs> to try to be a, a, a president. Yeah. When your name is Nikki. I, ne- I always knew that was never in the cards for me. Not just because I'm a woman, but also because... Or I felt it wasn't in the cards because I was a woman. But also, Nikki is just not a, a serious person. No offense <laughs> yeah, to me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just like, it's just not. My mom, that my parents gave me the name Nicole on my birth certificate in case I wanted to be a serious person. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah. That, that's what they said. In case, you know, when you wanted to be a professional. And I never needed it. But no. it is there. Um, and I've never been called it in my life, but people are always surprised that that is my my name. But who it would puts be the Nikki same on a thing with, with Bernie, like Bernie Sanders. Like that's not a serious Bernard. name either. You have to change oh, it to right. Bernard. I never even thought about that. Yeah. Um. So I can't stop buying Taylor Swift merch. It's honestly become a problem. Um. I don't. I every single day I make a new purchase. Um. It's there's too much of it. It's mm. actually um, I brought I bought four, t- three new sweatshirts and a T-shirt this morning. I got a package last night that Chris was cracking up because it's just a bunch of random crap that I kind of <laughs> some of it I already own. Um, it's I, I don't I don't know what's happening, why I need all this stuff. And I don't even like wear it all that often. Mm. And when I do, I d- because I do want to connect with other Swifties and that's why I wear it, I think, but I don't really get to connect with others. No one ever talks to me about it. So I kind of feel just like dumb. I feel like a real safety in it sometimes <laughs> because I just feel like uh, I want to connect. People aren't connecting with it. Um, I am also feeling like shopping is like bringing me is I'm using it as a crutch sometimes online shopping, getting packages, getting new oh, things. It's so um, rewarding. You just get that little so hit of dopamine. Good. Oh my yeah. God. I, when I, you're addicted yeah. to and shopping. It's so yes. easy for Swift when it's March. Apple pay. It, it's it's, so it's easy. every day I buy a new thing. Cause there's a new sale going on yesterday. Emily, my social media girl who I talked about last week, she um, was like, girl, there is a sale on Abercrombie 20% off all NFL merch. You need to get cheap stuff. This stuff is so cute. She sent me like four screenshots. I was like, (laughs) just send me the links. I need this stuff. Mm -hmm. I bought a Chiefs jacket. I bought a Chiefs sweat, two Chiefs sweatshirts, a Chiefs t shirt, all men's. Um, Don't really know if I got the right sizing, but that counts as Taylor Swift merchandise too, by the way. Like, this is not, this is, this is what it is. That's Mm -hmm. like all I buy now. I really don't know. There's really no guide on how to fucking dress as a professional like woman in this world try to send me and i've asked for this before there's no one telling you how to shop anymore and some besties sent me like Paige DeSorbo's amazon account which was helpful except everything sold out and she hasn't updated it in forever and i will wear anything Paige DeSorbo wears because she's the cutest even though it won't look that cute on me but show me a blog where girls d- Put together an outfit, and you can just buy everything on the outfit. Oh, Show man. me one. Just give me one. Well, that's the Weren't future. they around a lot? Like, no, it wasn't. It was the past. This was like 2013. Oh. I remember following cute right. girls' blogs, mm-hmm. blog spots, and you mm-hmm. would go and you would click on the picture, and there would be all the links to the things that they bought. Now, I, I don't know where to go. Like, when you type in, like, cute fall, like, what sneakers are people wearing this fall? Or, like, what kind of boot mm. style is in this fall? Uh, you get fall. all different... I don't know what... I don't know what type of shoe to wear. Shoes are confounding to me, girls. I don't know what... Because so, sometimes a, a style will go out so quickly and yeah. be so bad-looking to people who know fashion, and I'm so embarrassed to wear it. And sometimes I ask my friend Sarah Lena because she just has natural good style that like shifts with the culture, and she doesn't even have to try. And so I'll be like, do you think these are cute? And she's too nice to be like, no, so I don't even ask her anymore because I just know she'll be nice. But like, And I don't want to bother her to be like, will you find the right shoe for this dress? But I don't know what... To, I know you're like, get a stylist. I do have stylists. They're very expensive, and I love them so much, and they're good for like... A outfit here and there when I'm going to an event where I need to look head to toe amazing, but I can't for- afford them on a day to day basis. I don't know what you're supposed to do. Noah, like I go to free people, which is like, oh, they have a lot of cute shit. I'm overwhelmed. I don't know how to put it together. Me too. I have the app and I just spend so, waste so much time scrolling through. 
I have the same shoe problem. I don't know what shoes to wear. <laughs> I don't know what shoes to wear. I don't know I if don't know. if it's cute to have a chunky heel. I don't know if it's cute to have big big straps. I don't know if it's bad to have your feet out. I don't know if it's good to have like I don't know what to wear. And I don't see anyone trying to help us. And I am not <laughs> blind. No one's trying to help us. Go and off, so that's Mickey. why I buy Taylor Swift merch because it. I feel in some way it's been approved by Taylor Swift. Thus, ah. it must be cool, even though she doesn't wear her own merch, which is fine. I still I feel, feel like, like she's approved it, so I will wear it. That's why Taylor Swift styled whenever they say what she wore. I, I buy it because it's already approved by someone, Done. but I don't know who to trust. You can't go to shopbop.com and be like, what are the best sellers? They're lying to you when it's best sellers. And also, I don't even know who's buying from shopbop. It could be girls without good style. I don't know what's best seller I can't trust. Isn't this you- what influencers are? Like, I feel like every time I see an influencer, they're always saying, they're always like showing a picture of their clothes and then saying where they got them uh, from. No, these girls, I'm not kidding you i'm i'm sorry alex borenstein not the girl who does the lowest voice okay. on family guy <laughs> but there's another girl that has a similar name cutest style going i am obsessed with her sorry i haven't learned her name it's something like that but you know how you know someone very well but you've never like read their name yes. does that make any sense to anyone yes, yes and like yes, really yes. put it in your head it's so embarrassing it happens to me all the time but she has great style, but I will click and be like, what, where is this from? And I like, can't find it. Like, they'll just do the, the link to like the, the, it's always Chanel or Gucci or something. And I'm not buying mm-hmm. that shit. Like, yeah. I want to know what to get at Zara. Mm-hmm. Just, but I you also feel bad about that. I don't, I don't influencer. know. I just don't know what to wear. And that's, I think that's the root of why I'm buying Taylor Swift merch is because I feel in some way it's been approved by someone whose style I like. Yeah. And it really hasn't. It's well, just a safe thing for me to buy. In the future, um, in the near future, you're going to be watching TV, Amazon especially. You're going to be seeing someone wearing something on a TV show, mm-hmm. and then you can just click on that thing they're wearing, and you'll be able to buy it from your TV. Why isn't that here yet? There's- that technology <laughs> w- was promised to us, I feel like, flying cars, like, many years ago. Like... I just, Amazon's going to do it first, I guarantee. I'm and obsessed Apple, probably. with biker you already shorts. Have- yeah. And t-shirts now. I look like a scrub everywhere I go. <laughs> I'm disappointing to the masses who have any kind of like, I went to a store the other day and I looked so disgusting that, I, and I was returning clothes, which is never, I'm going to tell the story when I get back from break because it's kind of funny. So I went to a store the other day to return some items, which I never do. I was so proud of myself, but I'm also nervous because whenever I return items, I always feel like I'm breaking the law somehow. Like I've somehow like, like I'm not a person who wears things and then returns them, mm. even though I know that's a thing. So I think they think I'm doing that, which is totally gross to do with the kind of athleisure wear that I was returning. But I walked in the store and I was wearing a grubby Taylor Swift shirt, not because it's grubby inherently. It was grubby because I, everything I wash and dry goes to shit for some reason. Like things just look grubby that I own because I'm stained. I'm a stained person. And so, um, call back to a million episodes ago. But, and then I was wearing biker shorts that had like dog hair on them. I just looked like, and I, this is the day I woke up at 1235. This was yesterday. Yeah. Yesterday. And so wow. I walked out, I walked to this place with my dog and I have a baseball cap on. I just look not good. I know it. My face is puffy. Everything's disheveled. And I'm returning these items, which, by the way, it wasn't in the bag from the place they went to. Like, like I'm returning them to. So it's like the items are in a different bag. You know how, like, <laughs> it just it's that doesn't make you feel good. I always feel like a criminal when I'm doing that. Like, I always <laughs> like to find the bag it wasn't that I like bought a them with. Grocery store bag. It wasn't like a Ralph's, was it? No, that it would was make just you like seem a, really. Like but you, you know, so like a to- random tote. <laughs> they never but take yeah, you're the right. bag though. When I try to return it with the bag, I want them to reuse it, and they just always give it back no, to me. No, they don't. They'll just throw it ba- away. But it does look you make you look legitimate. Like, oh, she's been here before. She mm-hmm. shops here. She didn't just buy the like get get these on the street from. Or she was here recently enough them. that she still has the bag. Therefore, yes. she can return it. Mm. It just makes you feel like you belong and that you're not doing anything shifty even though i wasn't even Mm -hmm. though i did try on the shirt and these the tags of this place are safety pinned on so i took it off because i thought the shirt was a hundred percent gonna fit and it a hundred percent it like 200 percent did not fit it was like three sizes too small so i immediately put the tag back on but i didn't know where the tag was safety pinned Mm -hmm. on it 
So I, I disclosed that. I said, hey, I tried this on once. I took the safety pin tag off. I put it back on. It's not in the right spot. You're going to have to put it back in the right spot. She didn't care. Um, she didn't even like, I thought maybe she was like listening to headphones or something. You know, when you talk to someone and they don't reply and you go, oh, headphones. At least that's what I hope people do for me when I don't reply to them because that is the case. But she didn't say anything. She wasn't listening to headphones. She just heard me, I guess, but didn't care to respond to that. And she's kind of like sorting through these clothes. And a couple of them have little, like two pieces of dog hair on it. I see it in the light. And I'm like, oh my God, this looks so gross. Even though I literally tried it on and like took it right off. And I've checked for deodorant stains. Like it was clear, but it maybe had two pieces of dog hair. But I just felt grubby. Like, oh my God, I'm such a bad person. I felt bad. And then I even like was trying to light the mood. And I was like, oh my God, I literally thought I was two sizes smaller than I was when I bought these blindly the other day. And still nothing. And I go, oh, God, you know, I um, this girl hates me. I hate myself, honestly. And I hope she rejects this. And she goes, do you have the receipt? And I was like, yeah, I have it emailed. Hold on one second. So I'm looking up the receipt. She's like, I'll just get your number. And at this moment, I had the thought that I hope she knows who I am. I've never had that thought. I literally don't have that thought. Maybe once or twice I've been like, oh, so I can get a good table or something, or they can make it work for us to get a table at a place. I've been like, I hope I get recognized. But it's never really on the front. It's It doesn't occur to me. But in this moment, I was like, I want her to know I'm not a scrub. You know, like mm. I just, and that's a quick way to know. And so I give her my number and she goes, oh my God, I love you. Oh my God, why are you here? What What are you doing here? And I was like, I live here. And she was like, wait, but aren't you on tour? And she was like, she like knew a lot about me. And then wow. suddenly she got very nice and was totally understanding of it. But it was, a, but listen, I would have done the same thing. I mean, sometimes at work, you're just like not in the mood for shit and you're just trying to get your job done and it's Labor Day and you're working and working for some company you know that working. doesn't give a shit about her. That's for sure. Yeah, for sh- for sure. So I didn't even gr- begrudge her. She wasn't didn't have like an attitude before. She just wasn't like she was just doing her job. Yeah. Um. And then she totally lit up and was so nice. And um. I felt I felt that uh that little like Julia Roberts pretty woman moment of like mm. big mistake huge like <laughs> oh now but instead it was just me returning things so like <laughs> it's not like they you could have made a lot of money off of me I'm like wow. You just lost money, and it was it was a huge mistake because I could have walked out of here and not returned these things. Like, what was I trying to prove? <laughs> but it felt good in that moment to. And then I go, I'm sorry, I look like shit, and she was like, No, you look amazing, and th- that was a lie. But that was yeah. so nice of her too. Um, but that was that was like all you returning three items and getting two hundred and twenty one dollars back on some kind of card is a great feeling. It felt like I had earned that money by mm-hmm. not keeping those clothes. Yeah. Is that a th- way to make you feel like you earn money is just to buy things and then return them? Well, yeah, because especially if you're it. a person who'll just throw it out or donate it and then it is all, and then it is like you already you spent the money. So yeah. if you put in the effort cuz you did do work I to did. get the money back. Oh. I only bought the items, let me be honest with you, because I went I was bored. This place is near where I live. I walked in. I didn't want to buy anything. I w- didn't even like anything. But I just felt like the the shop person was like just kind of I thought again like this shop person thinks I'm grubby and thinks I don't have money and I want to just prove that I am like an actual person that like even though the person was very helpful and was like can I get you a size in that like I could just tell that I I wanted to make it worth their while that they went and got a size even though I didn't even want a size in it and so I, I was I was literally pressured into buying this thing which and that's why I go like oh my god this is why I like online shopping no one's being like that looks cute on you do you want a size in that what's going on thank you so much to people who work in retail I know it is a thankless and awful job because you like clean up after people and you really realize how like shitty human beings are but I don't ever need any help ever in a retail store I don't think Mm -hmm. I ever want and I'm maybe not like a lot of people because I'm you know I have lots of friends who are like like to try on things and like oh they're excited to to have someone go I'll start a room for you I've never wanted anyone to start a room for me I don't I will buy the items try them on at home yeah I'm the what do you one mean? time. Oh, well, if they tell you something looks cute, I rarely ever yes. go into a store to buy clothes. But one time in my memory, I went to Bonobos. You know Bonobos? Oh yeah. I went. Oh, to and Bonob- they are very customer service heavy. Yeah, they give you like they're like, do you want a beer? And I'm like, what? Yeah, yeah. Um, 
and I'm trying on these shorts, and I I remember I was trying, and I was with someone who I barely know, um, and I tr- I tried on these salmon shorts that were like oh that's really high, and I was like wait is this me? Can I actually wear these? And everyone around me was like oh those are amazing, they're so good, and so I bought these salmon shorts, mm-hmm. and the first time I was wearing them, I was like I feel like a freak. I would never wear thigh high salmon shorts ever and this was a huge mistake and so i was like so how could i trust these the the retail person who's telling me that it looks so amazing when they were that wrong like so colossally wrong i do like when they go oh i I get to the front counter and i'm buying something she goes oh i love this oh my god i'm i got one of these too i got this in like every color i kind of feel validated and that will make me maybe keep it more um, mm-hmm. because I think it's like a hot item. She's like, Oh my God, we were almost out of these or something. You know, like you create a need Yeah. But overall. I really, I don't want to talk to anyone in a store and I'm really sorry to everyone who works in stores and that's like your fucking job. And like, if you don't do it, you get reprimanded by management. Like you can't yeah. not ask me if I want to start a room, but I don't ever want to start a room. I always want to try everything at home. I've said this before. I do think it's a trick. Um, that they have bad lighting in those stores because it discourages you from trying it on in stores, like a little room where you can't even get a far enough away from the mirror that you feel good about your body. Like you're like right up close next to it. Like mm-hmm. I can't Noah, do you shop at stores ever? I, yes I do. And because I live in a very small area, I always go to the same stores and there's one store in particular that I love going to. Mm-hmm. And there's this sales associate and she's really, really sweet. Very nice does the same thing. Can I help you find something? No, I'm good. Thank you. And then I'll be looking at something. She'll be like, oh, that would be cute on you. Can I start a fitting room? All that, right? And then, yeah, of course, because I played into it and I talked to her. Now, every time I go there, she has mm. this conversation. She looks me so like deeply in the eyes and I'm you like, can never go there again. With me? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like every time I go there, I love the store. But every time I go there, it's like, oh, okay, hopefully uh, she's not yeah. working today so I could just get things done. God, mm. I know because that's the other thing is when you touch an item and then they're right behind you and they fix it. Oh my like, god! Like you've unfolded an item Brutal. and then I try to fold it back and I almost make it look perfect and then they fix it after me. Like I, I, I can't. I want to. I that I just want to leave. Although, let me just like completely negate everything I just said. Are you ready? Mm. Yeah. Yesterday I, hope- I was shopping for like new yoga pants or something. <laughs> Final thought. And you were like, first down does make sense. No, it still doesn't and never will. And I'm uh, honestly <laughs> pissed off that no one goes, Nikki, that's actually an interesting question. That's all I want is people to go, that actually is weird that they name the steps to the thing the same thing as the thing. That's I refuse, interesting. I it's refuse to you. like calling a ladder a rung <laughs> when each of the rungs are called rungs. That's what it is. Yeah. Or yeah. It's, like, like. I, like okay i want to get up to that tree okay so you're gonna do first tree then second tree then third tree and then you're gonna get up to the tree what what excuse me no, i'm you're sorry gonna that get up make... to first tree again first tree again and then you're gonna start over and then we're gonna start at first tree again and then yeah it's it's nuts until so anyway, you get to first and bush this this takes me this is completely the other side of the coin but chris and i were talking about i was like lamenting about um I was trying to buy some athleisure and I'm like, God, what, should I try this brand? And he goes, why don't you, have you ever tried aloe? And mm. I said, Chris, Chris, that's very interesting. I will never buy clothing from aloe ever intentionally. I mean, if they gift me something after this speech, I will. But, um, and I'm saying this as a white woman who has never really felt this way before in my life. And I just want to make that very clear that I'm talking from a place of like, I felt like I was ignored and treated as less than, and and it's probably me uh, appropriating something in some way. I don't even know. Let me just scratch that. Not you can leave it in, but scratch it, you know, from your memories that you just heard it. You get what I'm saying. I went to an aloe yoga in Beverly Hills and I was dressed a little scrubby, but that's fine. And no one talked to me and I was, and no one was talking to me and I saw them talking to other people asking for help. And I was like, Oh God, when is this going to happen? I don't want it to happen. No one. Then I was like, let me just see how long I can stay here and see if anyone asks if I want help for anything, because it seems to be happening all over the place for these girls with rock and bods. Mm. And like, I don't have a horrible bod, but at this point I was not like fit. 
and I looked a little scrubby, like maybe I couldn't afford stuff in there or something or just like not cool enough to wear it. No one helped me. And I was in there for like 20 minutes trying, like just kind of looking around, giving off the vibe of I need help. And I got, I go, that really was shitty. And I didn't like how I felt in there. And I'm sure that's how a lot of people feel um, going places because of other things they can't control about themselves. I don't know what it was. Maybe I had on a cloak of invisibility that day, which was like a dirty Taylor Swift sweatshirt or something. And they're like, she can't possibly afford aloe yoga, even though it's not that expensive. And then, but that's not it. Then I went to another one months later even though i was like i didn't like that experience went to another one same thing happened no Damn. one helped me and they were helping everyone else so mm-hmm. i Fun. refused to ever buy from them again because i felt like somehow like the, all, every girl in there just like thought i was like so gross like she doesn't deserve to wear our claws and i want to also say this about like retail and i was talking to the girls chat about this but like why is it that when you walk into a place to buy clothes and it's like, um, let's just say like Artesia or like, um, uh, I, I guess like an Alo yoga or I'm trying to think of like, not even not Zara, but like a place that's like maybe even anthropology. I don't know if it's anthro, but Lululemon. like lemon coach. Like, yeah. Mm. Lululemon, Nord, not even Nordstrom. Cause they're so friendly, but why is it that I think they're cooler than me? And I think they're kind of mean girling me mm. and I desperately want to win over their approval. And I feel like I have to buy things in order to convince them that I deserve to shop there. I know this is my own insecurity and I should just not care what people think easier said than done. But I really look at the root of it and I'm like, there's no, sh- I'm, I'm throwing no shade because I think retail is an, uh, a great profession and one that's really difficult and one that I would, I was always scared to do because I just didn't feel like I was cool enough to do it. Like even in high school or college, like I was like, I don't dress well enough to have that job God, and I don't yes. carry myself well enough. I'm not like put together enough. I'm a stained person. But these people I treat like they are Anna Wintour, you know, like I yeah. act like they th- are so much better than me and I want to impress them. And I feel like even bad being in their shop. It's not their shop. They're making maybe with mi- a little above minimum wage. And I'm acting like they are richer than me. Like, not that that's like, there's a status to their. Well, cause they're young and hot and they, so they automatically say, are the gatekeepers pretty. of cool. Yeah. yeah, I guess that's it. I guess there's not really much to explore here except that they're young and hot. You're so right. And I do actually, if if I quit comedy and was like, you know what? I just want to get a regular job. I would still never do retail. Not because it's like hard work and stuff, because I don't think I'm cute enough to do it. And so that is a, a, a thing that I, I do put work them on re- a pedestal. You could work at like an auto parts store. Or like a REI. Yeah. Oh, yeah. REI. For- no, no, REI. You hate nature. I have to- <laughs> yeah, but I, I, I would why honestly. Why just keep walking around going? Why no, do you want this stuff? I feel way go better. <laughs> I'd feel way better working at an REI and and faking being into nature than I would at working at a Bloomies. <sighs> yeah, or like a being one of those people that sprays Saks. perfume. Oh on my you god, you working at a sax I would be sh- how because you have to dress like you shop there, but you make yeah. a wage that makes it so you can't. Yeah. Even with your discount. I think yeah. most of the time. I mean, I think these women that work at Saks, at least the one I go to, they there's no way they're like that's their only income. There's just no they have to have husbands or something like doing something. It's just it's how do you work those high-end stores and dress in it? I don't know. Maybe mm-hmm. there's answers out there, but I just the other day I was like the intimidation I feel shopping and going in places where girls are dressed cute and it's places I want to shop from, but I'm too intimidated by it. Like even those even those things where you like hire like a stitch fix you like hire a stylist to like put together a box for you yeah i was like at times too embarrassed to even get one of those because i didn't want them to see like what they're dealing with because i have such shame and insecurity about how i dress yeah it's such a weird thing i that i can't let go of like i just even though i've learned a lot of stuff to figure out how to be cute Mm -hmm. i still at the end of the day always grab the grubbiest i have nice things in my closet i'll never wear them because i feel somehow not deserving of them you're killing it yeah. Got on stage, on I rent things. Mm-hmm. I rent. For, yeah, it's, rent it's, the it's, runway. it's strange because in the public eye on stage, you're like a fashion icon. Yeah. Like what you wear on uh, during your special, during. Sure. Your, uh, oh yeah, my like, Because I have a stylist. Yeah. 
telling me exactly what to wear and I trust them literally blindly. There is, I mean, sometimes I go, I don't know, I'm not comfortable in this. And that's like the most I'll weigh in. But I I can take literally zero credit for that. They'll be like, Nikki, the Emmys is coming up this weekend. I got a text from them last week. Um, So what are you thinking for the Emmys? I go, I literally whatever you think. I I had no direction, no color, no shape, no style. I go, I I just want the shoes to be like not bear traps. For my feet so I can kind of walk, but actually make them bear traps. Who cares? I'll just bring flats. I'll, I've learned my lesson. So I don't know. I give no direction. I, I guess I just, it's nice to know when you know what you want. And it's nice to know when you truly don't know. And it doesn't matter. And it reminds mm. me of my mom shopping for back to school clothes all through my childhood. And my mom screaming at me in famous bar going, you don't even know what you like. And me being like, I don't. But for some reason, my mom's tone insinuated that that made me a flawed person. And so it is ingrained in me that there's something wrong with me that I don't know what I like. But I like Taylor Swift merch. There you go. And that's and you're about to see at least six new <laughs> shirts in a row on this podcast. Because <laughs> that's all I can give you. Um, and then I will say that if I ever get a compliment on something from someone who I think is stylish, a.k.a. Sarah Lena, I will buy that thing forever. And that's like the thing I'll buy. She complimented some sunglasses I got from a- Amazon. I've bought 13 pairs. I've lost 12. <laughs> I can't stop buying them. They're seven ninety nine. dollars I'll, I'll try to remember to put a link in my um, uh, uh, thing, but they're, they're, the, they're the ones I've worn on the show that are like, look like trucker sunglasses, like aviator type, that cover mm. like my entire face. And Sarah Lena was like, those are cute, girl. And I was like, oh my God, they're Amazon. And I was like so excited. And she was like, I kind of don't need them. But she <laughs> did say they were cute. And so I will buy them forever. I, I, I just, anytime a cute girl compliments anything i will remember it the rest of my life so if you are a girl out there with good style walking around when you compliment a girl who's a little bit insecure you are giving her the greatest gift you can't even imagine we will remember it forever noah pull up from your memory a time where a girl that has my hairstylist what did she say what was the shirt what was the thing you were wearing and let us know i know it's a black romper that i got from madewell that i was just gonna wear as like an everyday thing and she's like that looks so good where did you get it from i need to get one and she has great style and you respect her and so you never forgotten it and you will never throw that out right never never. girls if you have good style (laughs) Days where I look like I have good style, I'm going to start following my own advice and giving girls compliments because yeah. it it oh fucking God. matters. All right. We covered a lot today. We'll be back on the pod tomorrow. Can't wait. Um, I think my sister will be here. That'll be exciting. Yes. Thank you guys for joining us. Uh, we're going to uncover a People article that came out this week that <laughs> said, um, uh, get to... Uh, get- <laughs> Everything you want to know about Nikki Glazer's sister, which is just next level for all yeah. of us in the family. We can't even believe it happened. People Magazine. We'll get into that tomorrow and much, much more. Thank you for listening to the podcast. I will see you then. Uh, don't be careful. Bye.